there's a, a perception among people that lawyers are not connected. They're not connected to their clients, and they're not connected to the jury. And I think one of the keys to winning cases is understanding that disconnection and immediately start to try to create the connection. Trust is not automatic, it's earned. Credibility is not automatic, it's earned. And in my profession, we have a credibility deficit. People believe that lawyers will lie, lie to win a case. And so when you know that's how people feel, you have got to give them the hard, unvarnished truth, not just about your client, but about yourself as well. You have to admit that I'm flawed, I can be goofy sometimes, but I want to show you that my heart and my belief is 100% with my client. My dad was a lawyer, and I decided at the age of eight years old I wanted to be a lawyer, but I had no idea what it involved. Uh, I knew that uh, my dad was a politician, he was a state representative, district attorney. I think as a little kid I liked the respect he got, so I decided I want to do that. I had no idea about the courtroom, and so I was on a decided track. I was going to go to college, I needed to make the grades and uh, I went to Baylor Law School. It just became the thing that, that uh, I knew I was always meant to do. If you ask me to be your mechanic, I'm afraid I'd do a pretty bad job at it. If you ask me to fly your airplane, I think uh, we might not have a conversation afterwards. But trying lawsuits is what God wanted Clay Dugas to do. Man, I ain't never known that guy to do nothing halfway. It's, it's always 110% in anything he does. Clay's been a friend of the family since we were five, six years old. So he's, he's uh, I guess, as close to a brother as you could possibly have and not be blood r related. Whether it's playing, whether it's working, I mean, it's wide open. It's either zero or 110. There's no such thing as halfway with that guy. I went to law school because I wanted to be a lawyer that made a difference. And when you have mortgage and kids and ambition and you put those things together, it's a formula for wanting more. I'm not going to deny that. But when I got into it after a while, I realized that there's nothing more humiliating than somebody who through no fault of their own is hurt and they can't work and they don't have an income and they have kids that uh, have Christmas coming up. They have, they have needs that, to be met. They have utility bills. All these pressures, and it's so humiliating for them during that time period. I've been broke myself. I've been flat broke. I've, I've moved around with, with cars where I had to fill the radiator up with ditch water to keep it going. In law school, it's humbling. Clay is a rare breed of a combination of both technical knowledge and then that also uh, innate ability to fight like a madman. He's an absolute expert in the industry and has taken on so many cases that he has so much experience, his body of work speaks for itself. He's ready for a fight because he's so prepared for a fight. My dad was a tough negotiator and I'm different from my dad but inside I think I've got the same fight. I think I've got that same fearlessness that, that he brought to each and every case. Well, Clay was born and raised in Texas, and he is a Texas guy through and through. And, and the perception typically of a Texas man is that he's a tough, Wild West type outlaw. And, and that's somewhat befitting for Clay because he is tough and he will fight. Uh, and he will uh, be somewhat of a modern day gunslinger as he goes out and uh, rights wrongs. Texas is blessed. We have the best economy in, in the nation, but we also have a huge increase, increase in fatalities in tractor trailer accidents. Anybody that's driven on I-10 knows that there's gonna come a time you're gonna get bullied uh, by a truck driver. For the United States alone, it's about a $730 billion industry. And when you add Canada and Mexico to it, it exceeds a trillion dollars in annual income, the trucking industry. Truck driving is hard. The way they get paid, it's by the mile. 
the dispatcher oftentimes doesn't give a flip about their hours of regulation because let's face it, if, if the driver gets pulled over, the dispatcher doesn't get ridden up, but it affects the driver, it affects the livelihood. So they have to go out many times and take risks that they shouldn't have to. Trucking litigation is a natural fit for Clay, uh, quite simply because there's such a high volume of cases. There is a lack of training and, and safety regulations that are solving the issues that come with accidents. And that's the type of thing that Clay can pinpoint and find that niche and really make that difference that he's looking for. See, it's not about uh, Clay versus truckers. It's about Clay versus safety or the lack thereof. We're not against truck drivers. We're against bad truck drivers. We're against dangerous truck drivers. If I told you about the kind of truck driver who was doing hundreds of web searches uh, right before he crashes into another 18-wheeler and jackknifes into a car and burns that occupant to death and kills a great-grandmother and her two children, I think you'd have to agree. We don't like that kind of truck driver. And believe it or not, that truck driver was the trainer. The other one was in the sleeper berth. I don't think there's any safer organization than air transportation. The FAA, I think, does the best job in terms of safety. It's rare when a plane goes down, it's rare when somebody dies. They have zero tolerance. You know, if somebody even thinks about getting onto an airplane drunk, they can go to prison for life. I think the target has to be that we have to have alignment between our standards for our pilots and our standards for professional truck drivers. Why should they be different? If you're haul, hauling hazardous fuel, toxic chemicals, explosive chemicals, going 75 miles an hour down the highway, 80,000 pounds, families in SUV left and right, kids in school buses left and right, why shouldn't the standards be exactly the same? In 2011, I was rear-ended by a company truck um, from the back, me and my two children. We were on our way home from my husband's graduation from the fire department, and I was hit on the freeway. I initially panicked um, with me and my kids in the car. I had to call OnStar to get them to dispatch um, emergency medical services to me. I felt like I didn't know anybody, and when I did come to, me and my children were rushed to the hospital um, to make sure we were okay and checked out. I was nervous. Like at this time, I felt like I didn't have anybody to call. After I kind of calmed down, I did some thinking. I was like, okay, I can approach this two ways. I can try to do this myself, which I really think this is gonna be impossible, or I can try to get somebody to help me because me against a company is probably slim to none. So I looked around the phone book and actually that was the first name in alphabetical order pages. I was like, you know what, let me give this guy a call. At first I was a little skeptical because I was like, you know, attorneys, I've heard they're really not your friend. They are only there for a check, but Mr. Dugas was totally opposite. He was very down to earth. I almost felt like I found a, a friend He's a father. I know he can understand that, you know, anytime you have small children in a car, that's hard. That's hard to get them back and forth to school. That's hard to get some of the activities. That's hard to try to accompany them with the things that they need. And Mr. Duke is assured that everything will be okay. We'll get, get you, we'll get you another vehicle. We'll get you where you need to be, where you can live a normal life again. The number one thing we all want at the end of the day is to go home safe to our loved ones. So many times what I see are people that get in accidents with big trucks and they're shocked and they're stunned. You hear the familiar, I'm okay, from people that have been in an accident. Now, if you're the insurance industry, the trucking company that might have caused this, they like to interpret I'm okay as nothing happened. But in my business, I understand I'm okay as means I'm alive. I survived and I almost died. But just because you're okay doesn't mean that you shouldn't get thorough medical evaluation. There's a limitation of time for you to file suit. There's also, in every state, pretty much a presumption that when you settle your case, 
you're settling for everything. That, that includes future medical. I like to tell my clients uh, in kind of a, a serious way. Now you understand that by signing this document, that if you walked out the door and you fell over dead, this is all you'd be paid. So if it's all the money you're gonna get, why, why on earth would you wait until after you had signed on the dotted line with the insurance company and then get evaluated and say, oh my God, I've got a serious issue. You owe it to yourself to get fully evaluated. He doesn't give up. He just, he fights for everything that the client is entitled to. He fights for justice for his clients. He's, um, he's amazing. I've heard of a lot of offices, uh, attorney's offices that say they never meet their attorney. Well, Clay, he goes out of his way. He goes to their houses. He uh, meets them after hours. You know, like some of them can't get off work till five and, and it's hard for them to get in during the day. They miss work, they miss pay. So he goes to their homes and he meets them after work and he, he accommodates their hours, their availability. We are in the service industry. What kind of service industry says we're only open nine to five, no weekends? Not too many successful ones. You know, need and demand in my business doesn't happen Monday through Friday, nine to five. Don't bother me at lunch. It happens 24 seven. In the office, Clay gets to know his clients. He starts to really care for them and get to know about their lives. It helped me emotionally just to know that I wasn't by myself, you know, even though I was the one that was injured, um, I felt like I know it was worth the fight because I couldn't let the other person win. He treats the courtroom as if he's entering the boxing ring. His reputation is that he is an absolute warrior in the courtroom and it is not uncommon behind closed doors for other attorneys to admit that they would much rather settle than ever end up in the courtroom against Clay Dugas. I have a philosophy, and I got it from the art of war, Shinsu. And it basically goes like this. If you want your opposition to prepare to settle, prepare for all out war. If you want your opposition to prepare for all out war, prepare to settle. We prepare for all out war, each and every case.